What better tank to defend the Colobanos medal than the IS-3? Hello guys and welcome back to World of Tanks Ace Tanker series. As you can see today we'll be driving the IS-3 and driving the IS-3 is Perkan. So we are playing on the map steps and we are going to see how you should play your heavy tanks when you are fighting on this map on the standard battle mode. So Perkan is playing his IS-3. He got a really nice matchup here, only 5 tier 8 heavy tanks and tank destroyers on the enemy team. And he's trying to go on the left side where usually the heavy tanks go and fight them off. Now this is going to be a really nice replay. I watched it once before I started recording and I can say that really nice gameplay here. So stay tuned and see how Perkan wins the Klobanov's medal. So the first position that he is taking here is a position to try and find shots on the crossing mediums and heavy tanks that would like to go to G1. As there is nobody there, he rushes with the I-6 to this Cromwell. Now you can see on the minimap that on the other side there is a lot of enemy tanks. And in, there are also two tier 8s and probably the others are somewhere in the base camping. So Perkan is pushing here and trying to shoot at the heavy tanks that are spotted. Now. He is aiming here on the Black Prince and the Tiger. What he should be really doing here is going forward and trying to fight them face to face. Because from this position he can only see the top of the turrets on the tanks. And he fired two times and missed. So the IS-3 doesn't have that great accuracy that you would expect that you can snipe from these kind of positions. But it has the armor and it can bounce tanks like Black Prince and Tiger 1 when he is facing forward. Now I will not talk much about the gun on the IS-3 and I will not talk much about the tank itself because probably most of you have already seen the videos previous and have probably played the best tier 8 tank in the game if I may say so. Now what Perkan is doing here now is face hugging this tiger and when he is ready to fire he backs off. Now that disrupted the aim of the tiger and he was able to bounce the shot from the tiger from that close position. Now we can see that he is here on a really nice HP. He only took one shot from that Cromwell while they were trying to kill him and he is in a really really nice position to do much damage on the enemy tanks. Now the enemy is making a big mistake here they are exposing the, all of their tanks on the open field and they can get picked up one by one from this ridge where the most of the Perkins team is. Now He's focusing on this Y, but in my opinion he should be focusing on the WZ on the position you can see there on the 7 and 6 line. He shouldn't be going for this tier 6, he should be going for the tier 8s and kill them if he can. Now he has the Panther 2 also. But he is too much focused on the OI. But nevertheless, he is doing a very great damage here. He is taking this dangerous platoon of the three OIs that are playing. Now he spots the tier 8s and goes for the Panther 2. Now he doesn't have the shot on the Panther 2, but the Tiger, sorry, the T34 is fully open. And if he puts one in him, the T32 will be dead. He reloads, he leads the shot there, but unfortunately the shot goes pretty down and he wasn't able to shoot at the T-34. Now, the situation is not looking that great for him. 
and his platoon mates because the enemies have a lot of map control and they are only covering this corner where they are now and fight, trying to fight off. Now what they need to do is either push on one side and get more map control, get more vision or stay here and try and shoot long range shots. Now fortunately he gets penetrated here, we don't know what that was, it did more, more than 700 damage so it could be the OI that shot him in the side of the cupola or it could be the Borsig with the big gun. Now he's trying to extend the view range of his team here. He finds the vision on the right metal and is aiming for him. He reloads the HE shell but unfortunately the right metal has excellent camera rating and gets off unspotted. So the HE is a good choice here for the right metal because that tank doesn't have any armor and Perkin is doing the proper thing. Now he wants to go and fight the other tanks like for example this WZ so he switches back to regular shells. So the I6 and him are all of the tanks that are doing the damage right now. The I6 is in an awkward position, he has that Rhine Metal on the side and has the WZ that is spotting him constantly. So the Perka decides to change flank and get out of there because if he stays there he will get shot by long range shots from the OI and the Rhine Metal. I6 manages to kill that WZ-111, that's a really nice gameplay here by the I6 driver and he took care of the one of the biggest threats in the enemy team. Unfortunately he falls to the Rhine Metal, that's what I was talking about, the vision was extended by the WZ and the Rhine Metal had the shot here on the WZ, uh, sorry on the I friendly I6. And now all that's left on the other side is the KV-2. So the KV-2 has poor view range unless he is using some optics or binoculars. But in the position where he is now, he is going to soon get spotted and killed. So the Perkin finds the T-34-100, that's the Czech tier 7 medium. And he is still progressing to the cap to try and find the shots on the medium tank or on the Oni that was spotted last on the middle of the map. But unfortunately that KV-2 cannot be helped from this position. So maybe a misplay here by Perkan but we can see that he has a really nice view range on that Oni. The first shot goes in really nice. The KV-2 is still holding only on 80 HP but it allowed Perkin to shoot a couple of shots and now the T-34-100 and the Oni are on one shot. So he switches now to premium shells. Well he has only one regular shell loaded. So with these premium shells he has more penetration and as you can see he is fighting for the Kolobanos medal now. He is not in a bad position here. The Hellcat is AFK as the enemy team says. And the T-34 is one shot and the Oni is one shot. So the biggest threat for him is probably the Rhine Metal Borsig which can penetrate the Ice 3 pretty easily with that gun that it has. Even though if it was using the bigger gun or the smaller gun, it has enough penetration to pen through the ice tree. Now he spots the AFK Hellcat, which is not that bad, he is going to get a kill on that Hellcat, but also the positioning of Hellcat was very very poor for Perkin here because he got spotted on the crossing and trying to set an ambush to defend on the friendly cap. Now he is trying here in circles, he is trying to offset the positioning of the enemy tanks as he was running away but he goes back 
and he's going to set up an ambush on the J0 now. The J0 is a really nice position on this map from which you can control the entirety of the friendly cap and from that position you are held down against the tanks that are trying to cap and that are approaching now. This position can be compromised if you get flanked through the H7, H8 position because you don't have vision on that part of the map due to these small ridges here and you can get flanked so he needs to be really careful here if he gets spotted he will try and shoot whatever is spotting him now here is the Oni he has a really nice shot here on Oni that should be an easy kill let's kill on the Oni and now he's spotted and he needs to get back as soon as he can because he's going to get probably flanked from one or two sides by the enemies. Now, as I said, the T34 100 was on one shot, but we don't know the health of that Rhine Metal. He could be full HP as far as we know. Oh, so he changes lengths here, and here's the Skoda. Sorry, the T34. He uses out the aim here, really nice on this kind of range and with that penetration with the premium shell. It was really really nice to have the ability to out aim. And he gets tracked here by the Rhine Metal and the OI behind him misses now. He is trying to get some distance from the OI. Now Rhine Metal misses again. That was really poor play by the Rhine Metal. He's getting some distance from the OI, turning his back on him, but he's now in this slope. No, he's not watching where he's driving. And the, here's the Rhyme Metal, and he survives the shot now. That is really nice. All that's left to do here is... Oh my god. He gets tracked from behind by the OI. The OI is using AP shells. If he was using AG, this would be all over. He puts a nice shot on the OI and now it's one versus one. Both of them are one shot but Perkin is in IS3 which cannot be penetrated probably from the frontal side by the OI. If that OI is loading A3 he has a chance to kill the IS3 but and really nice snapshot there behind the cover that's a GG and let's take a look at the post game stats. So we saw really nice gameplay here, we can see that he got a couple of medals like Bruiser, Duelist, Fire Fire Effect, a Colobanos medal for standing alone against 5 tanks and winning, Steel Wall medal, a High Caliber medal, a Top Gun medal and of course the Mastery Badge Ace Tanker. On the team score sheet we can see that he did 5500 damage plus he scored 7 kills and 1500 experience. On detailed report we can see that he fired 25 shots of which 18 hit the target and 17 penetrated. Now as he was shooting a lot of premium shells at the end of the game he got a loss of about 20,000 credits. All in all it was a really nice gameplay here and nice demonstration of the possibilities of the ice tree. Thank you all for watching. If you didn't like the video drop a dislike or leave a comment how I can improve the channel. And if you liked the video, hit the like button, share and subscribe for more content as it really helps me out a lot. And also don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Google Plus to get the new content first, every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And if you're wondering what to watch next, hit the little i button in the top right corner and it will lead you to another video. See you guys next time.